If you lose, it sends a really bad message. It just sends a bad, and they will build it up. Here's the story. If you win, they're going to make it like ho-hum. And if you lose, they're going to say, Trump suffered the greatest defeat in the history of the world. This was the greatest. You can't let that happen to me. <laughs> Tuesday night was absolutely brutal for Republicans across the country because, as you all know, Kentucky governor and Trump bootlicker Matt Bevin lost his race to Democrat Andy Bashir. And on top of that, socialist from Virginia Lee Carter won his reelection campaign. Rasheen Aldridge Jr., who was the first Fight for 15 worker to go on strike in St. Louis, won a seat in Missouri's state assembly. And Julie Brisman, known for the viral photo of her flipping off Trump's motorcade, also won a local race that she ran in. So overall, it was a really great night. Although I will say there was one race that so far it seems as if the results are pretty devastating, but we'll get to that in a separate segment. For now, I want to go to the uh, victory speech from Andy Bashir, who not only thanked teachers for his victory, but he also gave a shout out to unions. Tonight, I want to say thank you to our union families that helped make this election happen. So um, that was great. Now, this race in Kentucky was incredibly crucial because it kind of gives us a sense of what to expect in 2020. And if Matt Bevin was vulnerable, then that also could indicate that Mitch McConnell may also be vulnerable too. So that is going to be certainly a behemoth to take down. But this is a really good indication that that's the case. Now, one of my favorite aspects about this story is that Matt Bevin tried to win by tying Andy Bashir to Bernie Sanders and fear-mongering about socialism. Um, but unfortunately for him, obviously, that didn't work out too well. Hi, this is Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin. Today, Sunday, Bernie Sanders, Crazy Bernie, is going to be here in Kentucky. He's here protesting business. He's protesting those who create jobs and opportunity. He thinks that everything should be free. Somehow the job creators should be punished and the people who do or don't work to varying degrees should get everything for free. It doesn't work that way. Anytime someone gets something for free, someone else is paying for it. In this race in 2019 here in Kentucky, you also have people on both sides of this equation. Andy Bashir, who's in line with Bernie Sanders, they share the same party, the same ideology. They share the same values on many fronts. They're both strongly pro-abortion. They both strongly believe your Second Amendment rights should be restricted. They strongly believe that you are people who should be punished if somehow you're out there uh, pursuing the American dream. These are the kind of things that we want to reject here in Kentucky. Not only with Crazy Bernie, but with Andy Bashir this fall in November. This is an opportunity for you to choose, not only in 2019, but again in 2020. The American dream is a real thing. Of and by and for the people really works if we the people take it seriously. Exercise your right to vote. Get out there and let your voice be heard. If you want to side with Andy Bashir and Bernie Sanders, that's your prerogative. But if you believe that America and Kentucky deserve better than that, I ask for your vote November the 5th. It feels so good to watch that knowing that he lost. And this tells me that the tide is turning because fear-mongering about socialism it no longer works. It doesn't even work in Kentucky. That's a really good sign that we are witnessing a paradigm shift. Finally. Now, my favorite line was that he says, Sanders and Andy Bashir believe people should be punished if somehow you're out there pursuing the American dream. Now, he's clearly grasping, but if you think about that, what does that even mean? Like, what are you referring to? Because Bernie Sanders is trying to bring back the American dream because in case you haven't been paying attention, the American dream is dead. The American dream meant that you have economic mobility and you can give your children a better life than what you had. But to him, I'm assuming that the American dream means that, you know, if you rein in large multinational corporations and you expect the elite class to pay their fair share in taxes, then you're against the American dream and you're just being overly punitive. Well, look, this is why you lost, Matt, because you don't understand the needs of working class people. And on top of that, he was the least popular governor in the United States because obviously he wore his contempt for working people 
on his sleeve. But in spite of how horrible he was, it's still genuinely shocking that a Republican lost in the deep red state of Kentucky. But since losing, he refused to concede. And since the margin of victory is fairly thin, if Bevin ends up contesting the results of this, this could be a situation where the race is decided by the state legislature, according to the Senate president. So, I mean, this is a sore loser that we're looking at. He lost because he ran a bad campaign and was a bad governor. Give up, concede, step aside. Your fear-mongering about socialism didn't work. Your fear-mongering about the Democratic Party, even in a deep red state, didn't work. And guess what? Since we successfully came after you, we're coming for Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell is absolutely destructive, and any president who is elected will not be able to get their agenda through if Mitch McConnell remains in power, because if he stays in that seat, he's going to be the Senate Majority Leader for Republicans, um, or Senate Minority Leader. Either way, if he's in leadership, we know he's a very effective leader, and he rightfully called himself the Grim Reaper of socialist policy. It's true, but it's not just socialist policy. He's basically killing everything and stacking the judiciary. So he's got to go. So if you want to support an opponent of Mitch McConnell who can actually win, who is progressive, then Stephen Cox is your answer. I interviewed him. I brought him on the show and he's a phenomenal candidate. Support him if you have the means to do so. Phone bank for him, canvas for him. But either way, you know, this is a good sign of what's to come. And Mitch, we're coming for you next, buddy. Beta male.